grinding or plasma cutting. What is going on guys and welcome to today's video. My name is Maximus and you are watching the King Builds YouTube channel. So today we're gonna to be discussing plasma cutting or grinding, which one makes sense for you. So stay tuned and enjoy the video. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. Uh, I have this whiteboard here and we got plasma cutter and we got grinder over here. Um, I put P for price and that's pretty clear right off the bat. Uh, the grinder is cheaper for sure, and the plasma cutter is more expensive. Next, we have capability. So I'm gonna demonstrate right now what are some of the capabilities of a plasma cutter versus a grinder to help you decide which one would be better. Next, we have S for speed. How fast is a plasma cutter compared to a grinder? We're gonna find that out too. All right, so first off is safety. Uh, you're gonna want some gloves when you're grinding or plasma cutting preferably a jacket and also preferably a shield over safety glasses. Um, for plasma cutting, you can use the shade and for grinding, you can keep it open. It's basically a face shield to protect your face from burns and sparks. All right, so I got this little piece of steel here uh, that I'll be demonstrating on. Uh, but with a plasma cutter, you can basically cut out any shape you want. It's almost like a pencil and you can just draw whatever you want and it'll fall out of that piece of steel. Now, with a grinder, it's a different story. It's only good for straight lines. Um, so if you want to make a complicated design, you might have to just cut a square and then use a grinding blade. This is a cutting blade, it's nice and thin. Grinder blade is thicker. It looks like this one, which is a little bit worn out already. And with that, then you can just keep filing away at it basically and get the shape you want. With the plasma cutter, you can just cut any shape you want. Let me demonstrate. All right, let's say we want to make a shape like this. You want to go out here, up, back down, like that. I'm going to show you how we can do that with a plasma cutter. Alright, so here's the piece and you can see that is exactly what we just cut out of there. But it is really hot, so be careful. Now just for a visual demonstration, if I had a grinder blade like this, right, and I wanted to cut this corner, I would not be able to because as soon as the grinder blade goes in, it is not able to turn. And as you can see how large this blade is and how small that one section is, you could try to maybe cut little sections like that and go around, but it wouldn't really work well. Next, we're gonna do a speed test and see how fast I can cut with the plasma cutter across this whole piece of metal versus the grinder. And another tip, I like to use a straight edge when I'm plasma cutting because if you don't, just doing freehand, you'll have a bunch of these little waves in your cut and it won't look very good. Where if you use a straight edge, it can be just as good as a grinder. All right, so here's our little piece that we just cut. Um, this one's got a little bit of a bend in it because the plasma cutter hit my glove and kind of went around. Um, but that was pretty quick. So now what we're gonna do is get the grinder and see how it compares in speed to the plasma cutter. All right, so here's the piece that we cut off with the grinder. And as you can see, it is nice and smooth. But in terms of speed, the plasma cutter is much faster. The grinder took 34 seconds to cut that piece of metal and the plasma cutter took 13 seconds. So the plasma cutter is a lot faster and I did a rough estimation and it is approximately 160% faster than the grinder. One thing I'd like to mention is that you do need an air compressor. This is a Harbor Freight air compressor. It is an eight gallon. And what you wanna do is look for this measurement right here. It is SCFM, it stands for standard cubic foot per minute. Um, so that is how much air this air compressor can put out. It says at 90 PSI. So this one will run with the plasma cutter, but maybe after three minutes or two minutes of nonstop running, I have to give it a minute to catch up, but it does pretty good. So if we take a look at the whiteboard, we can see that the plasma cutter is $2,500 and the grinder's $50. So there's a big difference there. So the grinder wins in that category. Next, we have capability. The plasma cutter can do squiggles, any shape you want. And the grinder, well, it's only really good for straight lines, unless you cut out a square and you just keep working at it and make the shape, but it takes a lot of time. And at the bottom here, I'm not sure if you can see it even, 
but uh, it's speed. How fast is the plasma cutter compared to the grinder? Well, the little piece that we cut, these two little pieces, for the grinder it took 34 seconds, and for the plasma cutter it took 13. So I did a little bit of math, and it's approximately 160% faster, and that's the plasma cutter. So it's pretty quick. Next, I wanna talk about something called consumables on plasma cutters. Now on the end here, if we unscrew it, there are all of these little pieces that wear out over time. We have the little nozzle piece which just drags along the metal and over time, the end just gets larger and it kind of gets covered up in metal and it doesn't work anymore. Next, you have the outer housing piece. This, I've never had to change it yet, so it lasts quite a while. But then you have these two little pieces. This is like an electrode and then you have this other little nozzle um, that goes in here as well. And these two are the two main things that I've noticed that wear out pretty quick. So when you get a plasma cutter, you're gonna wanna look for the price of all the consumables and see how much it's gonna cost. Because with this plasma cutter, it's $2,500, so the consumables are more expensive than maybe a $700 plasma cutter. So make sure you look out for that point. Now, as far as grinders go, all you need is a grinder blade. Once this one wears out, you just pop it off like this, you unscrew it and put a new one on. Very simple and it's pretty cheap to get grinder blades compared to consumables on a plasma cutter. Another point is with the plasma cutter, if you're just chopping up a frame or some steel, it's very easy to just grab it and cut right through it really quick. It doesn't need to be neat, you can cut it really quick. Now, with the grinder, one thing that you might wanna be cautious about is when you're cutting, um, and it's at a certain angle and you got like one hand on the grinder It's not advisable because this blade can get caught into the steel and then the grinder just wants to go flying So it's not very good plasma cutter. It does shoot sparks and drop drops of boiling metal But if you stand back where the proper gear is much quicker to use the plasma cutter How handy is a plasma cutter? Well, I have this go-kart here and I swapped in a Honda CB250 for in this thing and it is pretty quick. You can check out that video on my YouTube channel as well. But for the break, I need to make this specific bracket to mount it. I'll put a clip of it up on the screen. When I had to make that bracket, it was really good that I had the plasma cutter because I just cut out that exact shape I needed. With the grinder, I would not have been able to do that. Which one is more handy to have in a workshop? Well, honestly, they're both really handy and ideally, it'd be best to have both. In the beginning though, it is much cheaper to get a grinder and this is what I started with. I used it for all of my cutting, cleaning up metal, everything before I got the plasma cutter. But once you have the plasma cutter, your production and speed of cutting steel and doing many other things like that is increased by around 160%. So that's a lot. It also depends on well, what are you using it for? If you have a lot of projects and you're cutting a lot of steel all the time, I would recommend getting a plasma cutter. It'll save you lots of time and you don't have to buy so many grinder blades. But if you just like to tinker in your garage and build little things, a grinder works pretty good or just you can get even a smaller plasma cutter. This one can cut, I believe, from around a quarter inch to half inch thick steel. Now that's pretty thick. You can get a much smaller plasma cutter and it would do just fine. So at the end of the day, it really just depends on your budget. Are you willing to spend this much money? How much production do you need out of it? And do you have an air compressor as well? Because that's about 150 bucks. So you gotta kind of put that into perspective there. But you could use it for many other things, flat tires, nail guns, you could use it for many other things as well. So it just depends on your budget and what exactly works for you. And I hope this helped with you guys to decide which one makes more sense, a plasma cutter or a grinder for you. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe and hit that like button. And if you want, check out some of my other videos. That go-kart that I just showed you, that thing will do like around 55 miles an hour. So check that video out on my YouTube channel. You can check out the whole building process so far and I have a lot of other cool projects that involve a plasma cutter and a grinder. You can also follow me on Instagram at KB underscore Kingbills. I'll put that name up on the screen at the end of the video. So just go on Instagram, you can follow me there too. Thank you guys for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.